In an earlier video, we looked briefly at atoms and molecules. Let's now look at atomic structure in a little more detail. We'll take this further later on in the course, but for now, let's just deal with the basic features of an atom. You may recall from the first video that every atom is made up of subatomic particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons are positively charged, and they have a mass of about one atomic mass unit, an AMU. Uh, now, if you Google atomic mass unit, you'll find out how many kilos that is. It's a pretty small number. For now, we're just going to stick with this. We can uh, discuss the unit in more detail in class. A neutron has a neutral charge. It has no charge. And it also has a mass of approximately one atomic mass unit. So protons and neutrons are roughly the same size. The electron is negatively charged, and it only has a mass of about 1 18 hundredth of an AMU. Uh, so an electron is much, much lighter than a proton and a neutron. And that means that the mass of an atom is almost entirely due to its protons and neutrons. In a normal uncharged atom, the number of electrons equals the number of protons. And this means that the negative charges of the electrons cancel out the positive charges of the protons. And overall, the atom is neutral. So how are the particles arranged? Well, the protons and neutrons in an atom are always located in a tiny and incredibly dense nucleus right in the center of the atom. This nucleus takes up a ridiculously small amount of the total volume of the atom. There's no way I can draw it to scale on this page and still have you be able to see the nucleus. And we're going to explore that in more detail later in the course. For now, let's draw six protons and seven neutrons in this nucleus just for the sake of argument. That's six protons, and the neutrons have seven of them. The rest of the volume of the atom is mostly empty space, with electrons whizzing around it. Now, electrons are usually depicted orbiting the nucleus like planets, with some orbits close into the nucleus and others further out. The first orbit, or electron level, can hold two electrons a maximum of two electrons. And the next can hold eight. So we put our first two in the first level and uh, our remaining four in the next level. Now, why do we have a total of six? Well, we said that this atom had six protons. And if it's a neutral atom, then the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So we've got six electrons to play with. We've put two in the first level. And we have a remaining four to distribute in the second level which can hold up to eight. The third level, which in this atom is empty, could hold up to 18 electrons. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about the third level being able to hold eight electrons, and there's a good reason for this simplification, but it is a simplification, as are the orbits. We're going to look at this in more depth when we get onto the section on atomic structure, so let's leave that controversy for now. Now let's bring in a few useful terms. The atomic number of an atom is simply the number of protons that it has. It also happens to be the way in which atoms are arranged in the periodic table. They're ordered by atomic number, starting with hydrogen, with one proton in its nucleus, uh, and going up to the much larger atoms. So the atomic number of our atom here is six. It has six protons. And if we were to look at a periodic table, you would find that uh, atomic number six corresponds with carbon. So what we've got is a carbon atom. The mass number of an atom is the total number of protons and neutrons. Remember we said that most of the mass of an atom is the protons and the neutrons? By totaling them up, we get a feel for how heavy the atom is without getting picky about the small extra mass of the electrons. So the mass number of this atom is six plus seven, which is 13. So let's say for this atom we have an atomic number of six, that's six protons, and the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons, which is six plus seven, which is 13. Next, the charge. We said for a normal neutral atom, the number of electrons equals the number of protons, but it is possible for an atom to gain or lose electrons, and this will give the atom an electrical charge, either positive or negative. To calculate the charge on an atom, look at the total positive charge from the protons and the total negative charge on the electrons and add them together. If there are more protons, the overall charge will be positive, 
and if there are more electrons, the overall charge will be negative. In this case here, they're equal. We've got six protons, so that's a charge of plus six, and we have six electrons, so that's a charge of minus six. So we're gonna have six plus minus six, so our charge is zero, so it's a neutral atom. If an atom does have a charge, whether it's positive or negative, we call it an ion. This means an atom with a charge. So only use the term atom if you're referring to a neutral atom, and use ion instead if the atom has a charge. Finally, here's a shorthand way of summarizing the information about an atom using its chemical symbol. You write the chemical symbol of the element that you're talking about, and you put the atomic number as a subscript on the left, and the mass number as a superscript also on the left. If the atom has a charge, you put it at the top right here, but our carbon atom is neutral, so we're gonna leave that blank. From this symbol, you can get all of the information that you need to characterize an atom. So let's work through an exercise. Um, I've given you the atomic structure vocabulary here, atomic number, mass number, and charge, and how you work them out. So we're going to draw a diagram and we're going to write the symbol for an atom that has an atomic number of 9, a mass number of 19, and has 10 electrons. Okay, so we're going to work through this bit by bit. We need to know the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and the number of electrons to draw this diagram. And we know that the atomic number is 9, and we know that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. We also know that the mass number is 19, and that that equals protons plus neutrons. So we can work out that the number of neutrons must be 19 minus 9, which is 10. And the number of electrons we've been given, it has 10 electrons. So let's draw the diagram, first of all. First we'll put in the protons, nine of them. And then we'll put in some neutrons, 10 neutrons. Now we have 10 electrons to distribute. We know that the first electron level can hold two electrons, so we'll put two in there. And we know that the next electron level can hold eight. So we have 10 altogether, we've used two up in the first level, so the remaining eight will all go in the second level. All right, our final task is to write the symbol for this atom. So the first thing we need to do is we need to work out what element it actually is. And to help us do that, we need a periodic table, and we're armed with the knowledge that its atomic number is nine. And we find that that's fluorine. So we're gonna write down its symbol, the atomic number at the bottom left, so we already know that that's nine and we need to put the mass number at the top right. Now, the most common mistake that people make when they do this is to think that the mass number is just the number of neutrons, and they would put 10. Please remember that the mass number is the sum of the protons and the neutrons, so 9 plus 10, which is 19. And finally, we have to work out the charge. Now, we've got nine protons, so that's plus nine, and we have 10 electrons, so that's minus 10. So our total charge is 9 minus 10, which equals minus 1. So this atom actually has a charge on it, which means we call it an ion. And we're going to write the charge at the top right, like this. OK, let's do another example. We're going to draw a diagram for this species here. So we've got to decode this symbol. We can tell from the bottom left number, that number 4, that that's the atomic number. And the top left number, 9, tells us the mass number. And BE tells us it's the element beryllium, which the atomic number would also have told us. We also know that the charge is 2+, plus, or plus 2 if you like. When you write the charge in an uh, atom or ion symbol like this, the convention is to put the number first and the symbol afterwards, so 2+. plus. But when you're referring to the charge normally, you would usually say plus 2, or minus 3, or whatever it is. Okay, so let's work out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons we've got. Protons are easy. It's the same as the atomic number. The neutrons will be 9 minus 4, which is 5. So we have 5 neutrons. And we know that the charge is plus 2. Now, we know that we've got 4 protons, so that's a charge of plus 4. 
and we don't know the number of electrons. So 4 plus something equals 2. And you work out that x must be 2. There must be 2 electrons. So that you have a charge of plus 4 from the protons, minus 2 from the electrons, giving you an overall charge of plus 2. All right, so let's draw those in. So we have four protons, five neutrons, and only two electrons. So they'll just fill up the first shell like that. And then we're done. That's our diagram for uh, beryllium 2 plus with a mass number of nine and an atomic number of four. OK, let's have a look at the periodic table and what it can tell us about atomic structure. We already said that the elements are ordered by atomic number. You can see that at the top of each of the boxes. Here hydrogen is number one, helium is number two, and so on. That tells you how many protons are in the atom, and it defines the identity of the atom. If somehow the number of protons in an atom changes, and it takes a nuclear reaction of some kind for that to happen, then the atom becomes a new element. But why not just have one long row of elements? Why make it into a table like this? And why are there only two elements in the first row, hydrogen and helium, and then eight in the second. Well, the rows of the periodic ta table, which are called periods, tell you which electron level is the outermost in that atom. Remember that in an ordinary neutral atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So let's look at hydrogen. It has one proton in the nucleus. I'm not going to bother drawing it, but that means that it has one electron in its shell. So we're going to put that in the first shell there. So that's hydrogen. Helium has two protons, so it must have two electrons. So we'll put them there. Now you can see that the outermost electron level that has any electrons in it for both of these atoms is the first electron level. And that's why they're in the first row, or the first period. When you get to lithium, it has three protons, so therefore it must have three electrons. So we put in the first two electrons, but then the first electron level can hold only two electrons, so the third electron must go into the next electron level, the second one. So that's why lithium is the beginning of the second row, or period. For all the elements lithium to neon, the second electron level is their outermost level that has electrons in it. So the horizontal period that an atom is in tells you the highest level that has electrons in it. For any atom, this highest filled level is called its valence shell. Uh, and the electrons that are in the valence shell are called valence electrons. Now let's have a quick look at sodium. It has 11 protons and therefore 11 electrons as well. Two go in the first level and eight in the next. And then we've still got one left over. But the second electron level can hold a maximum of eight electrons. So that one left over has to go into the third electron level. So sodium is in the third period. It's the beginning of the third row. And that means the third electron level is the highest one that has anything in it. And it has just one valence electron in that shell. Now let's compare lithium and sodium. They have different valence shells. For lithium, the second electron level is its valence shell, and for sodium, the third electron level is its valence shell. And that's reflected in the fact that they are in different periods of the table. But they both have one valence electron in that valence shell, and that's why they're both in the same vertical group on the table. The groups show you which elements have the same number of valence electrons in their valence shells. And if you think that's a bit arbitrary, then collide that train of thought immediately with the immovable fact that this small act of classification is the basis of modern chemistry. So to summarize, the periods, that's the horizontal rows, tell you which electron level is the outermost for that atom. For instance, for potassium, the valence shell is the one, two, three, fourth electron level because it's in the fourth period. And for lead, over here, it's the one, two, three, four, five, sixth electron level is the valence shell. The vertical groups of the table tell you the number of electrons that are in the valence shell, or in other words, how many valence electrons the atom has. There are several group numbering systems. The newest one goes from one to 18 straight across. But there is an older system, which I think is more useful at this stage, which goes like this. 
It uses Roman numerals and it goes from 1 to 8. I'm going to ignore the transition metals here for now. We'll get into them in more detail later on. And we just number the other groups 1 to 8. Now this number then corresponds exactly to the number of valence electrons that the elements in each group have. So for instance, boron, aluminium and gallium are all in group 3. They each have three electrons in their outermost shell. While for instance fluorine, chlorine and bromine, they're in group 7, they all have seven valence electrons. OK, here's your task for now. I'd like you to fill in the following table. I'm going to do the first one for you, just to um, get you started, but then I'd like you to do the rest. So we need to do this by deduction. We've got seven protons. We know that the atomic number is the same as that, so that's going to be number seven. The mass number is the protons plus the neutrons, that's seven plus six, which is 13. The charge here is the positive charge from the protons plus the negative charge from the electrons, which is going to be 7 minus 7, which is 0. So this is a neutral atom. Now we need to look up the name and symbol. We know that the atomic number is 7. So we go to our periodic table and we look for atomic number 7 and we find that it's nitrogen. So the symbol is N. The name is nitrogen. Uh, to complete the symbol, we put the atomic number at the bottom left and the mass number at the top left and because this is a neutral atom we don't need to write a charge. There we go, I'll leave the rest for you to finish off.